Well, this is a interesting angle. Obviously, I'm not. We're not staying here. <laughs> we're not gonna use this angle either. This is angles gone all wrong. All wrong. <laughs> Hey there, Cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. If you've been following the channel, you know I started doing a monthly focus recently. And if you're new, first of all, hello, welcome. Please hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you hang around. And I will, I started a playlist of all these videos that I will link down below. The idea is that I choose a very broad focus for the month, and it's not a priority even necessarily. If I have one of these books going at all times, I'm happy. Previous folk, is it foci or foci? Uh, that I had included physical books and advanced copies that I needed to get to, and last month it was series continuations. So series that I had already started somewhere, didn't have to be number one, and continuing reading more books from that series. It went amazingly! Gangbusters! Now I am filming this a couple days before the end of the month, so there's a chance that something else will sneak in, but out of the ten books that I've read so far, eight of them are series continuations and the two that weren't were buddy reads and i will wow i'm not ex this will not happen very often i'm sure i'm not going to list them because there were so many of them but if you look at my september wrap up part one it's pretty much all in there and my bingo boards how could i forget my bingo boards let me show you those first is sci-fi september and i have links to all of these readathons in my last monthly focus video so um i'll leave a link to that if you'd like more information and I think I did really well, and then I did 10 squares out of 16. But there's no bingos. I was really hoping for a bingo. One that I did better on than I even dreamed was Sapphic September, because two books I read happened to be Sapphic, and I didn't know it. So first of those was A Lot Like Adios. Both of the protagonists are bi. Um, it's a male-female romance. And then um, A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin has um, a brief sapphic relationship in it, and I didn't know that was coming either. So again, no, I do have a bingo here, thank goodness. Bingo across the middle, but much better than I was even hoping there. Then we have the magical readathon, and I have completed four of the main prompts, and this was the part that was due this month, and you needed to do two for your character. And I have two sets of two, there's actually two character ideas I'm going with. I don't know what I want exactly yet. I was also able to get Urban, and for these ones you have until April. So I'm not, you know, it doesn't matter if I don't have everything I want. And I was able to get a couple of the province that I wanted. Not the Heritage though, but I want Human for one of my characters. That's Read a Contemporary, that's not hard. And then Fall in Love Bingo, which is a three-month romance bingo. And this is really good for one month for me. I ended up reading a bunch of romance and everything had a square, which is always nice. And how could I forget Series September, which I didn't print anything out. I just wrote it on a scrap piece of um, origami paper. But I have all of the prompts done. The reason that two of them are on post-its is because I was hoping another book would come along that would also fill that, especially start, start a series, because that's the Flame in the Flower. I didn't like that book, and if I, I didn't want to include it if I didn't have to. And finish a series, Devil You Know Counts, but I started it in August, so if there were a, bu a book that I was completely in September, I was going to use that, but complete this, yes, yes. So I feel incredibly successful looking forward to next month, and I was not sure. I had a couple of ideas of things I could do for my focus this month, but I ended up going with backlist books, and more specifically, books from the 20th century. This year I found myself concentrating on the new and shiny, and there's nothing wrong with that, but all these books that I've been meaning to read for so long just continued to sit there, and I'd like to make a dent into that pile. So I went through my physical shelves, I went through my digital shelves, and found all kinds of books from before 2000 that I have been meaning to read. And I do want to say that this is not the most diverse list, and I'm not happy with that. And that's one reason why I won't be doing like utterly completely all backlist books. First of all, I need to get better at finding backlist that's written by marginalized authors. And in general, my reading is over 60% by authors from marginalized groups. So this is going to be the selection that I'm choosing from, not a end all be all TBR. But that's the whole reason I make piles of possibilities to begin with. Starting with the physical books I have on hand, there is Silver Metal Lover by Tanith Lee. This is from 1981. And I haven't read any Tanith Lee 
for I found this somewhere used and ended up picking it up. I also remember that I started it once and I wasn't in the right mood for it. It wasn't that I didn't like it. It was just I was bouncing off it. So I'm curious if now's a better time to read it. Then we have Heart of the Falcon by Francis Ray. This was on a list of top 100 romances that was done by NPR in 2015 and it was a curated list by people I trust and I have had a good time. I'm enjoying going through that list very slowly. This is another one on it that I managed to get used and yeah, been sitting on my shelf way too long. Then we have Her Smoke Rose Up Forever by James Tiptree Jr. Pen name for Alice Sheldon. These, this collection was first put together in 1990. Most of the works are pre-1977 and it's thick. Whole bunches of short stories. I'm excited about this. I have been meaning to read Tiptree, just again, haven't gotten to it. And at first I was thinking I read a story a day, but there's, because there's only like 20 of them, including the two introductions but some of them are 10 pages long. One of them is almost 100 pages long. So it still would be a great month project type book, but the one a day thing isn't gonna work. Laughing in the Hills by Bill Barrich. This came out in 1980. It's nonfiction about what it's like at the race course, but not the stuff you see on TV, everything behind the scenes. So once the jockey gets off the horse, all of the maintenance workers, I'm guessing, or the people in the stables, trainers, etc., etc. And I haven't been to the races very much at all, stateside or here in Japan. Horse racing is the thing here. They go in the other direction sometimes. It's weird and not at every course. Anyway, I'm curious. Then there's Teaching a Stone to Talk by Ann Dillard from 1982. A lot of these are from the 80s. This was a Life Library book that I didn't get to when it was actually time to read it. And it's short could be a nice easy win and nature writing, I believe, as well as talking about writing in general. Then there's Voices from Chernobyl by Svetlana Alexievich. And I was surprised this one just sneaks in. It was originally written in night or published in 1997. Uh, the English translation came later, but the original date is what I'm going by. I read Midnight in Chernobyl, which is a nonfiction account of the disaster there and the aftermath and everything else that came after. And uh, I have been meaning to read this as a companion to that for a while. Oh no, was that two book two prizes ago already? Yeah, so good timing for this too. And the last physical book I have is A Knight in Shining Armor by Jude Devereaux. Can I get this so it's not all shiny in your face? Not really. After reading the original old school romance, The Flame and the Flower, which I did not get along with, and you can watch every step of the way because I did a whole vlog about it, I want to read more old schools. And luckily that 100 best romances list has a bunch and because that list was curated by people I trust, like I know there's gonna be some icky things in these, like there's probably gonna be rape, but it will be dealt with better than it was in The Flame and the Flower. That one didn't make the list, so yes. On to digital books in the pile of possibilities, going with some of those old schools. The oldest one I think I have is The Windflower from 1984. And then from 1986, there's Blaze. And I'm worried about this one because even though it's on the list, they caveat it saying that native representation in old schools especially is bad. And I know it's bad, but apparently this is one of the better of the bad, but it's still gonna be bad. So I'll put on my literary critical cap for this one. And one that I'm coming into with slightly more knowledge is Gentle Rogue by Joanna Lindsay because I've read Lindsay before and I know that, yeah, it's gonna be a little rapey probably, but the plot is going to move. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, if not consent filled. There's This Rough Magic by Mary Stewart, which is a buddy read that I'm doing with Kara over at Wild Book Garden. I didn't write the date down for this one, 1950s, I think. There's Nothing Personal by James Baldwin, which is, I believe, a longer essay that was recently, recently brought back into print by Beacon Press with some new introductions that I'm super interested in. And speaking of books that recently have come back into print, there's Storm. This edition is from NYRB Classics and it's climate fiction. One of the first examples, I think, from the 1940s, if memory serves, and it's about a big storm that ends up coming to the west coast of the United States, I believe, while there's wild wildfires in California, so it ends up being a mixed blessing and curse. And there's a bunch of other books that I could mention, but you know, pile of possibilities are never complete. So this is a really good start though, I think, for October. All kinds of interesting things across genre. If you've read any of these books and liked them, please tell me down below, as well as any other thoughts you may have. I love hearing from you all. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.